Okay, this is the first part of magnetism and electromagnetism, okay? Um, the first part is very, very, very straightforward. It's just basic properties of magnets and electromagnetism. So this is very straightforward. Um, the next part, however, becomes quite complicated on this topic. So, to start off with, um, magnets. Um, magnets made of iron, okay? And in the case of a permanent bar magnet such as this, it's made of hard iron. And inside it, um, the dipoles are all aligned in the same direction and therefore you get this overall effect of magnetism. So we've got magnetic field which comes out of north and comes back in its south. Now because it comes out of north and in its south, if we get um, two magnets, a north and a south will obviously attract each other and the magnetic fields would go together straight out of north into south. But if you had a north and a south, they would repel each other, and a south and a south would repel each other. So a north and a north, the field would come out and then split apart, forcing the magnets apart. That causes this repulsion. Now, if we look at, say, an iron bar. Now, an iron bar made of soft iron. If we take an iron bar, then it's not magnetic because the dipoles inside it are all higgledy-piggledy. They're all misaligned. So they're all facing in different directions. So we've got some facing this way, this way, this way. They're all facing in different directions. This is called domain theory. Now if we take a magnet and we stroke the magnet and we keep stroking the magnet along the iron, then what can happen is these dipoles can all line up in the same direction. And what we get is this overall effect of a magnet. Now, if this magnet was dropped or if it was heated up, then what can happen is these dipoles can go back to their original position in the case of a permanent magnet. Now, there are other ways to magnetize this iron bar. So if we take a soft, something called soft iron, where the dipoles are all higgledy-piggledy, but we can make them line up, and then they go back higgledy-piggledy again. One way to make them line up, instead of stroking a magnet, might be to use electrical current. Every wire which carries a current has a magnetic field around it. So if we have a current through this wire, then what happens is a magnetic field will exist around that wire. So if you have a current going down, then we get a magnetic field which exists around that coil of wire. In order to make this greater, the effect greater, what we can do is we can wrap this coil of wire around an iron core. And this of course causes an electromagnet. Now electromagnets are interesting because when the current is flowing, the magnetic field around the, co the coil of wire creates the alignment of the dipoles in the iron, so we've got a, a magnet. But when the current is turned off, the iron core is no longer magnetic as the dipoles return to their original position. So an electromagnet works because when the current is going around the iron core, it's magnetic, and when you turn the electricity off, it's no longer magnetic. You can make it stronger, of course, by increasing the current or increasing the number of turns or the size of the iron core. But they're really useful because instead of a permanent bar magnet, this can be turned on and off. So one, an example of a use of this would be the electric bell. Now the electric bell, if you look at the electric bell, we've got a switch here and a battery. And how the electric bell works is this. When the switch is pressed, a current flows from the battery and it flows around these iron cores. Now this will make these iron cores magnetic. It flows along here, through here, through this contact area and back to the battery. This causes a strong magnetic field here, which attracts this soft, the soft iron armature. So that causes the armature to move that way, 
towards the magnet. This, <laughs> this causes the hammer to hit the gong, which makes the bell ring. But it's interesting to note that when the hammer moves to the left, the contacts are broken and therefore the electrical current stops flowing. This makes the iron core no longer magnetic because there's no current flowing. So the hammer returns to its original position. But when it returns to its original position, the electrical contact is created again and so the current flows around the iron cores again, making it magnetic which causes the iron armature to be attracted again, hitting the gong, but again breaking the contacts here, turning off the electricity and therefore turning off the magnetic field. And this cycle repeats, causing the bell to ring. So that's a use of electromagnetism.